guys and welcome to a brand new VFX tutorial. It's been a year since I've last said that. This is uh, quite funky. Today guys, we're going to be tackling a blood fabric effect. Now, um, in the past I've done this effect, especially in my recent short film. Well, not so recent at this point. But um, I've done it without the use of these assets. Now, Action VFX, if you guys don't know, have come up with a brand new collection of blood fabric assets. Now, these come uh, in handy because back when I was doing that short film, what I did was, in order to make it seem as if his shirt was uh, bloody, was I basically animated a red solid on top of the shirt. Now, that can look a bit funky, but since it was from a distance, it proved to be okay. But with the use of these brand new blood fabric assets, you can get nice and super close, composite that on top of a shirt, and Bob's your uncle. So for the purpose of today's tutorial, we're gonna be using an asset from Action VFX's blood fabric collection. Now, uh, warning ahead of the time, if you guys do have your own blood VFX fabric assets you wanna use, go ahead and use those. But if you don't, Action VFX have been kind enough to allow me to provide you guys with a lower quality version, still 720p, of their blood fabric asset, uh, a sample of one of these, which you can download in the description right now. So download that, shoot your footage. Now, we're gonna be doing this in HitFilm Express. Now, HitFilm Express doesn't really have access to a tracker such as Mocha. So what you wanna do is shoot your footage without your actor moving around quite a bit. Because if he's moving quite a lot of the time, it's gonna end up looking uh, really funky. I'm using the word funky a lot this video. Have you noticed every video there's a word I use a lot? Today it's funky. Funky. So yeah guys, shoot your footage with your actor and relatively still. Um, if you want to have it moving, you can as long as there's something visible to track in the scene. We are going to be doing some tracking in this video tutorial, but for the purpose of this, it's more about how to match the footage to your footage and how to keep it uh, looking realistic. If you guys want to have a more of an in-depth tutorial, maybe in HitFilm Pro, then uh, you can let me know in the comments down below. But for all of our free express users, we're going to be keeping it simple today. Before we jump into the actual tutorial, I want to tell you guys quickly, just for a little bit, about Action VFX's Black Friday sale. Now, they haven't told me to mention this, but out of my own, I have to mention this to you guys. Um, we have worked with them before. I have to put that out there. We have worked with Action VFX. We do work with Action VFX on this channel, but they genuinely are the best place that, that produces um, realistic stock footage on the internet. Their files are really high quality, they are versatile, they fix all of the problems that previous assets from previous manufacturers have or companies have, and also they come at a really good price. Um, their prices have, uh, a while ago, they slashed all of their prices 50% permanently off, and now with their Black Friday sale, they're having 50% off again, and even sometimes 55% for the first hour or so. So if you guys are thinking about buying Action VFX assets, if you guys want to step up from the free zone into the paid zone, then now is definitely the time to do it. I've left a link below um, to all of the different types of uh, collections and stuff. They also have the Action VFX drive, which is basically a hard drive that contains every single asset that they've ever made on it. Imagine a hard drive with everything. It even comes with like stickers and, and a bracelet and some cool stuff like that, but a hard drive with all of their assets. Save your internet, don't freak your mom out by uh, racking up the bowl, and just buy the hard drive. Now that thing, um, obviously it's a little bit pricey because it has every single asset on there in the top, like the highest quality you can get. But on Black Friday again, 50% off, so you can save a huge chunk of cash if you're interested in that. Or look at some of the other collections, even single assets. Everything's going 50% off. I've been talking about it a lot, but really guys, it's the best time. Even in my previous videos, I talked about how you should wait for Black Friday if you want to buy assets for filmmaking. This is the time. So if you are interested, click the link below. If you're not, no problem. Download the free asset down below anyways. And let's jump into HitFilm Express and get this done. Right, so here we are in HitFilm Express once again. As you can see, as always, I have my shot set up in a composite shot, opening on the uh, VFX timeline, as well as my flat bleeding hole asset imported from Action VFX. Now, for the basis of this tutorial, I'm going to be working with a 2K version because it, uh, you know, better matches my footage. But for all intents and purposes, the 720p version provided to you guys as a sample for free in the description will work just as well. So essentially, what we've got to do here, guys, is because we don't have access to a planar or 3D tracker such as Mocha in HitFilm Express, we're going to have to 2D track the shot. Now, if your subject is dead on the floor, not moving at all, obviously there's no need for tracking. But because I wanted to make more work for myself, I decided to shoot this moving. And if you watch this clip, I actually do move quite a bit, which is actually, uh, you know, not taking my own advice. But I wanted to show you guys an example of what to do when you do have a little bit of movement. 
Um, one thing that aids this is that I'm wearing a graphic t-shirt, as you can see. Now, the reason this aids it is because now I have points of contrast to track my shirt with. And what you want to do is therefore track your shirt closest to the place where you're placing the asset. If you really, really want your actor to be wearing a blank plain type of shirt, maybe like a blank blue or blank white t-shirt, then what I would suggest is adding a tracking marker, like a piece of tape or something, just to provide a point for you to track. Um, and then you'd have to remove it afterwards. So I think the easier thing would be to just have your actor be wearing a, uh, you know, printed t-shirt. Right, so getting into it, the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is create a new point layer. So let's click on new layer, select a new point, and then I'm going to rename this to be tracking data. Now that we have a point created, let's click on our footage layer, head over to the controls panel, and then under tracks, click the plus icon. This will open up the tracking window. Now what you wanna do is select the tracking box and move it over an area of contrast on your shirt that's closest to the area where you're gonna be placing the asset. So in my case, I'm gonna be tracking this little area here in the X wing over here. Since I'm gonna be, actually better yet, let's move it over here and track this section. As you can see, this black all around it and this white provides a point of contrast. And I'm gonna be placing the asset around about here. So make sure I'm at the beginning of the comp and then let's track forward. So what you wanna do now is select in the layer box, the tracking data point that we created and hit apply. All of our tracking data is now stored in this tiny little cute point layer we have created over here. Let me just sidetrack here quickly to say that I get a lot of comments of people saying that their software isn't working and they're not being able to follow along with the tutorial because they're stuck on the black screen. What I want you guys to do is normally check over here. If you're on the layer window, it's gonna look like this. And if you're on the viewer window, boom, it's completely fixed. Back to the tutorial. We now have our point layer tracked onto our shirt. So the next step we're gonna do is obviously to drag in, perfect uh, place to pause, let's drag in the bleeding hole asset from Action VFX. All right, here it is. Now, this asset is, uh, they have, the reason I love Action VFX so much is because the assets work so well. I dragged it into the timeline and immediately there's no, nothing to key out, there's nothing to set here. The color is almost perfect already since it's shot, you know, flat. And um, I have very little work left to do. So all I need to do really is, uh, I'm gonna, what I do is I'm gonna make this a 3D layer. And then I'm gonna go over to the controls panel and I'm gonna adjust all of the 3D rotation, scale and position controls in order to suit this to my shot. So I'm gonna grab this blue point here and I'm gonna push it back in 3D space. The reason I'm doing this is because obviously myself, uh, I'm a 3D object, so I want this to match in 3D space. So I'm just uh, match the scale up a little bit, push this back. This is all tweak and uh, you know adjust based on your shot. I rotate it in 3D space a little bit just until you feel it's comfortable. Also head towards the end of your shot and see how big it's gonna get and then adjust the scale so that it doesn't really exceed the boundaries of your shirt. Right, I am now happy with where this is placed. What you wanna do then is click on it and then we're gonna do two things. First, we're gonna click in the box over here for the parenting and we're gonna parent it to the tracking data. What this does is allow it to move with our shirt in the tracking data. Then we're gonna do is right click it Head up to blend and set the mode to overlay. This is gonna allow us to see through the blood as we would, you know, uh, in real life. Then what I'm gonna do is zoom into this. And if you can notice, there are a couple of defects with the color. So let's match it to our footage. Let's add two effects. First, let's work on the curve. So let's add the curves effect to this bleeding plane. And now what I'm gonna do is adjust this based on my shot. So uh, for my shot, if I can remember correctly, I just added in a little bit of contrast, pumped up the brightness a little bit just pushed it up just a tad and as you can see it's already looking way 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 better compared to how it was before matching with my shot the next thing i want you guys to do is zoom in and notice the difference in the blur on this footage and the blur on your footage this is because they were shot with different cameras and obviously they're not as sharp as each other head over to the effects panel and search for the lens blur effect automatically we have too much so go into the controls panel and reduce it all the way down to the least. And now I'm gonna adjust it slightly until I have something that looks like it sort of matches. For me, it's around five or six pixels. And here we have it matching perfectly. 
Right, essentially we are done with this shot. As you can see, a lot of the work is done by the actual asset. Um, since you guys are using HitFilm Express, what I would recommend is don't move as much as I did here, as sometimes you can see the track fail. So stand still, or rather lie down still, whatever you wanna do. Um, if you do have access to HitFilm Pro or a uh, planar tracking software, then definitely track this area and then apply it because it'll work way better since you can do it in 3D space and track a large area than a 2D track. And finally guys, I would say there's one more thing you can do in order to blend this better. It's create a new grade layer, place it above the asset as well as your footage, head over to effects and search for grain. Add it to the grade layer, zoom in and what I want you to do is head over to the controls panel and check the monochrome box and then set it to a nice and low amount like 5. What this does is provides a nice layer of grain over both of your footage as well as the asset. If you can see here we have differences but now when you have the grain it sort of just coats both of your two layers and blends it together a little bit better. It's a very subtle thing but subconsciously it does quite a bit. But yeah guys that's all it is. As you can see the, the asset does a lot of the work for us because it's been shot amazingly by the guys over at Action VFX. Um, so definitely check them out and I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let's take a look at the final compared to the original. And that's how you do an easy blood fabric effect in HitFilm Express using some free assets provided by Action VFX. Check out their Black Friday sale below. And oh, guys, if you want to see how to do an actual uh, blood hit effect with the blood mist and the blood uh, splatter and stuff like that, I do have a tutorial. I'll put it on screen right now. Check that one out. I'll put it on the end screen of this video as well. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. You guys asked for it. It's back. Tell me what you think. Give me some requests down below for some effects you want to see. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know I have, and I'll see you in the next video.